Good morning. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Ravi Kulkarni, a resident of Phoenix, Arizona. This podcast is my forum where I engage people in a conversation that is interesting to me and hopefully to others as well. This is my way of learning and I hope to continue to learn while talking to people. I hope others will join me in discussing topics on politics, healthcare, science, philosophy and in fact almost every topic under the sun. Good morning everyone. Welcome to third podcast on uh, this is on spirituality. Today I am joined by um, two people. Uh, Sri Harsha from uh, Houston, Texas and um, Chetan Rawal from uh, Arizona. Chetan, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chetan. Uh, I <clears throat> I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and uh, I work for the information technology industry, one of the large companies in that area. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether I can call myself spiritual or not, but I would like to think that way. How about you, Sri Harsha? Sure, uh, this is Sri Harsha from Houston. Um, this is my second podcast with Ravi. And, um, you know, about spirituality, I'm not spiritual. Disclaimer, I'm an atheist. Uh, you know, I, am, I was born atheist. My parents are atheists. So I am not into this whole spirituality thing. I'm just, you know, I just have my curiosity over there. But, uh, you know, I do not intend to get over there as well. Um, you know, I just want to have a discussion, have this discussion, get to his, you know, perspective, perhaps. That's actually great because uh, we definitely need a counterpoint to everything we say. That's what makes the discussion more interesting. Uh, because if everybody agrees with everybody, then, uh, you know, there is no fun in that discussion. So that's excellent. Uh, welcome, welcome both of you. Thank you for joining. And uh, so let me start by... Uh, let me start up, uh, by observing about myself, right? So I'm, I am I would like to call myself a semi-atheist or uh, agnostic. I'm, uh, I'm not, I, I don't believe in rituals. I don't go to temples. I don't pray to God. But uh, I'm uh, ambivalent about, about God uh, as, as a concept itself. So, uh, so my spirituality, I, I would like to call myself spiritual. Uh, let me state that. And uh, my spirituality comes from a slightly different perspective. And uh, I will we'll go in detail uh, as we speak in this, uh, uh, in this discussion. So let me say why I, I seek spirituality. This is not something new. I have been doing it or trying to get, become spiritual uh, for decades now. Uh, you want and, to define what is spiritual means first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, yes, that would be a good idea. Uh, I'm, I'm starting with that. So I believe that spirituality is basically an invisible thread that ties us all together. So when I say all, I include all human beings. Perhaps it could even in, uh, in, include other living beings. Uh, and even inanimate objects. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nuanced, and uh, I, I really don't know what that connection is or uh, uh, whether rationally it makes sense, but I believe such a connection exists. And um, we feel empathy for others. We feel empathy for other beings, and we even feel empathy for rivers and mountains and uh, trees and stuff like that. And what is that empathy? Why do we feel it? So I, I feel it's, uh, it, there is some, some spiritual connection. And uh, it's invisible and it's, uh, it, it's not obvious. And it may not be, in fact, visible to some people at all. But I believe, I believe, personally believe it exists. And that's what uh, I would like to call spiritual, spirituality. How about you, uh, Chetan? What do you think is spirituality? Well, my I mean... <clears throat> So, so what I think is is completely is is different. I mean, it's a lot different uh, than what you mentioned. What what I think is is basically the having interest or curiosity in knowing the fundamental question that who I am, why I am here, 
what is my relationship with the world and everything else i relate to and doing any effort putting any time and effort into figuring that out the desire to put time and effort and that that is spirituality it could be religious it 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 could be non religious uh, religion has nothing much to do but usually i mean those answers uh, people turn towards religion to really get the answers for those things so that's why we confuse religion and really being religious and being spiritual so th- that right. is my definition okay excellent yeah that's that's, that's a great definition uh, now sriharsha um, you i i know you, you said you are not spiritual and you don't seek to be spiritual but still if even if you don't want to be something you have to know what that something is or what that means to you so what do you say Sure, you know, my um, I I never really, you know, gave a thought into this whole thing. So, you know, it's a uh, it's a difficult for me to come up with a definition, but it's uh, I never thought in your perspective Ravi um about spirituality. You know, I always associated spirituality with religion um, in one form or the other, right? Um and uh, you know, let me give you another uh, you know perspective, you know. I was uh, listening to our Ganesh lectures on YouTube, right? So Arghadesh, you know, he says he's an atheist, and uh, you know, he tells a um, you know anecdote where someone asked him whether is he spiritual, and uh, he did not know how to answer that because he's the he's an atheist, but he seeks that inner question, right? But he does not want to. He did not want to call that as spiritual. You know, he said spiritual is a very um, you know it's it's a wrong term. for uh, you know for the indian civilization for indian culture because the indian culture um, you can be atheist but you can still um, you know you can still believe in certain things which is not possible in other religions so he says you know i am just a adhyatmik there is not really a term in english for that um you know i just wanted to you know put it out there that's it um so the and i know about the that connection that you talked about right the connections that human feel i do feel that plain human empathy uh and we can put ourselves into that situation if we see others and you know just imagine what would be the situation to ourselves to or to our family and i think that really drives that connection i i don't believe there is you know anything more to it than that sure sure yeah yeah um it's a uh, i th- i think uh, if i may observe one yeah, thing yeah so so okay no sorry sorry go ahead sorry. yeah so if there if if the one observation i would like to make the reason why people associate spirituality with uh, religion i uh, will come to this uh, will come to meditation and uh, why we need meditation etc um one of the things is meditation is very difficult it's hard it's hard to attain uh, that focus and uh, concentration required to meditate effectively so people have evolved over uh, centuries or millennia people have evolved various practices you can call them rituals if you like but uh, there are various methods uh, and uh, some of them are religious in nature because religion is after all a uh, cultural practice it's a set of rituals it's such a set of beliefs and uh, people have evolved uh, people have developed various methods and some of those uh, fortunately or unfortunately they coincide with religious uh, practices or religious uh, uh, rituals and that's why it's uh, it becomes strongly uh, associated with uh, with religion in my opinion that's that's why so if you ask for example if you ask uh, a hindu uh, a devout hindu or uh, uh, i know it's it's difficult to uh place people uh, in one box and call them hindu because there are so many different ways of doing it so but if if you ask a hindu what is religion uh, what is spirituality they may say somebody may answer saying that uh, i pray to god every day i i do these uh, you know puja and uh, i go to temple and uh, when i when i focus on god and when i am praying that's what feels spiritual to me if you ask um, Uh, christians then uh, catholics and christians they they have a slightly different 
uh, there they they associate spirituality with uh, Christ and with God and uh, with presence or whatever you know they they have their own definition and if you ask uh, Muslims I have I've heard Muslims say this that when I do namaz that 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 very practice of doing namaz puts me in a kind of trance or some kind of uh, feeling and that's what uh, makes me spiritual. So there, there are many de- different definitions and there are many different ways of uh, of getting there. Go ahead, uh, Chetan. No, so I, I, again, I mean, the, the religion, what you are saying, the definition is, is different, right? Everybody is in mind what being spiritual is different. Yeah. And that's why I mean it's a difficult one. So the same thing you can say uh, for religion also. What is religion? So we don't have word for adhyatma. So we don't have word, uh, the right translation for religion also. So and then all adhyatmic terms you talk about, there are no good English words. So dharma, there is no word for for that. So karma is also there is no word. Ahimsa, there is non-violence is not a right word. Because it's very limited, so the, so that happens uh, in every aspect. So my point is, when you discuss, I mean, if if we are not, we don't have even common terminology or common understanding, right? I mean, I, I completely disassociate with being spiritual and being religious. So that that's uh, I, I don't think I mean that needs to be even explained or discussed. Uh, I I think I mean we. Uh, uh, we need to define what we mean by when we are talking spiritual here, what we mean by religion here. Actually, what we mean by even no, nobody can answer clearly what, what we mean by God. Believing or not believing in God, first of all, we have to know what is God, right? Then and we can say we, we believe in that or we don't believe in that. Um, I am not sure we'll be able to do that, uh, Chetan. These are hard <laughs> questions, and <laughs> these are hard questions. And uh, at least personally, I don't have answers to these questions. I I can only uh, using my uh, limited English, uh, limited knowledge of all these topics. I can only uh, give you. I can do a Google search and give you one, but I don't think that will be satisfactory. So, so do we agree that having intellectual discussion about spirituality? is not spiritual <laughs> is not being spiritual right that is one of the things i wanted to discuss uh, in fact that's, that's a very good point uh, if you think about mind if you think about meditation if you think about what it means to meditate what it means to be spiritual uh, it is so so being uh, uh, you are associating meditation with being spiritual yes uh, so, so i mean your it's, mind, it's, it's, a, it's a strong a, connection being uh, doing meditation and being spiritual right correct so so people who are practicing uh, meditation as a exercise to really control blood pressure or manage heart rate you call them spiritual so here is the thing uh, you are right that being spiritual is is the goal for some people and uh, these are various methods. Meditation is probably one method to achieve. I, I, I don't think it's a goal. I mean, whether if you are a spiritual or you are not spiritual, I, I don't. I, I, that that that's a fact. I mean, I, I don't think it's a goal. Well, I mean, and and, it's, and, uh, and then there is a very various degree of being spiritual, right? Some people may be very spiritual. Some people may not be very spiritual. So, so are you saying that? Uh, I, you are born very spiritual or not spiritual, and there is no way to change that. I am not saying you are born. You acquire over time. With uh, maybe I mean so, you are born. I I don't know that you are. So born you are getting from. Then... Sorry. So in other words, you are getting from here to there, being uh, somewhat spiritual to very spiritual. So you there is a journey. So if there is a journey, then there is a goal, right? No, I mean you are living your life and. Suddenly, I mean, you feel an urge, right? Uh, uh, that, okay, I need to know this. So, uh, that, that's an objective. That's a goal, right? Is it not? I think we are quibbling over, over uh, semantics here. So, my, my uh, point is that, you're right. I, I agree 
that having a rational discussion about spirituality or even meditation is somewhat, uh, how to put it, uh, paradoxical, right? By very nature, when you meditate or when I meditate, what I hope to uh, do is to, as much as possible, reduce my thoughts, random thoughts that occur in my mind so that I, um, I focus, right? I focus and I don't, as much as possible, I, would, I don't want to think about anything. That's, that's the purpose of my meditation when I, when I meditate. And by, uh, by that mechanism, I want to achieve certain amount of spirituality. That's the, see, you said it very correctly, that the uh, objective, being spiritual means understanding the, uh, understanding the true nature of the universe or true nature of the self, right? That's also part of, what I, uh, part of the reason why I do it. And um, so to stop thinking, we are talking about uh, thinking about yeah, I mean, I, little, little, little correction. I mean, I, I'll make that. I'm, I'm not saying being spiritual is understanding the nature. I am saying uh, what, being spiritual is having a desire to put an effort into understanding. You, you may still not understand that, but I mean, you yeah. are you strive to understand that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it is. It's an effort towards understanding the universe. And uh, the way we are, when we meditate, the way we are trying to do it, I, I'm not saying that's the only way, maybe there are other ways, I, I don't know. But um, when we meditate, what we are trying to do is to understand the true nature of the uh, universe or self through, um, through achieving cessation of thought, right? Cessation of thought that distract us all the time. And uh, so, there is a paradox here. We need to, so there is no way to understand self by thinking about it. That's the point, right? So to have, to be rational is to think. Am I right in that? Uh, Harsha, Shia, no. what do you think? No? To be, how do you, uh, how, uh, when you describe no, yourself I, as I rational? No, I mean, I, I didn't wait for Harsha. So, yeah. No, no, I, that's I, I okay. Don't know what you, no, no, that's fine. Okay. No, please just go ahead. You know, I don't, I don't have any thoughts at this time. Please be careful okay. with your decision. I'm listening. And uh, also, uh, you know, my four-year-old, you know, woke up and he's been following me around, so it's difficult for me to work. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. That's okay. So, uh, what I was saying is uh, there is a paradox when you talk about... Uh, this is what I, uh, I struggled for a long time. I wanted to be spiritual. I wanted to, uh, w one of my goals in being spiritual and meditation is to develop better concentration, better focus on day-to-day -day things. I'm extremely distractible. And uh, so I seek myself to, you know, I seek uh, various activities like reading and watching and uh, listening to various things all the time. I cannot sit idle. I cannot sit quiet. And I want to improve that. So that's one of the one of my objectives. So the more I thought about it, the more I uh, <clears throat> confused I became. Then I realized that some stage I realized. So so so, so 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 Ravi, I mean, I, I thinking I, I think is not I mean, the way to get there. There is just no way to get there by thinking. So this somewhat I'm sure, Sri Harsha, this runs contrary to uh, what you believe, right? Because you you be, you are an atheist, you you are you would like you like to think that uh, it's a rational world. There is no nothing mysterious about the world. So if Correct. you want to arrive at the truth, then you have to think about it. There is no other way. Am right. I right in yes. making that You're conclusion? Right. You're right. And and I agree with that completely. Also. Right. So I I don't think meditation is a way. All right. So first of uh, all, you cannot you have a goal to be that. spiritual. So, so you cannot have a goal to be spiritual. It, it's like, I mean, or do you have a goal to be hungry? No, because you are hungry, I mean, you eat. You don't have a goal to be hungry, right? So the spiritual is, so if you say that, okay, you want to be spiritual because inc increase your concentration, that is not, that is not spirituality, right? Because spirituality or being spiritual, it's end in itself. I mean, it, it's not to do something. It's not a tool. Uh, to uh, uh, focus more or even meditation is just exercise. Meditation just allows you uh, to focus on thinking of something. And I don't think 
if you are trying to really understand something, you you cannot uh, uh, really the understanding will not come on its own. I mean, you have to think about that, right? So thinking is is a must part of. So we we call it Brahmagya or Atmagya. It's a kind of knowledge. We just I don't believe it hap- it happens overnight. We have heard uh, to many people that it just comes from nowhere suddenly. I I don't believe that, and I am pretty sure that it will not come to me without putting effort and thinking about that. So thinking is is very much required. Uh, uh, I think thinking is the only thing uh, which can really lead uh, to that knowledge. Meditation and some religious or spiritual activities. People, if if the, it appeals to them. They may do those things. I mean, may help, but I mean, it's really you have to think. And other thing is, I don't think that you can believe in something and become spiritual, right? And then that that is not a, even our concept that believing in something. Uh, it, it's a question of understanding. Uh, if you understand that, and to understand something, you have to think and you have to really know. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, do you agree? Do you be, uh, do you agree that there is something called subconscious mind that we yeah. think we we are uh, we cannot always describe how uh, it works or how uh, there is some some there, there, there is something going on. Uh, I don't know for the lack of better term, I'll call it processing. Some kind of processing is going on in the brain. I'm not talking about autonomous functions like heartbeat and all that. I'm talking about uh, purely from uh, thinking or uh, from ideas perspective, there is something that is that lies just below the uh, consciousness. Mm-hmm. So that is w- many times uh, many new discoveries, understanding, inventions happen at that level. People suddenly come up one day and say, "I know exactly how to solve this problem," and they did not arrive uh, at that solution by thinking about it, they, I mean, obviously they have thought about the problem for a long time, but they, that one missing step, one critical missing step in proof, of mathematical proof, for example, they arrive at that uh, through, uh, through uh, subconscious uh, process. So how does that happen? If you think everything happen, happens from conscious thought, these, obviously there is something to it. No, 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 it, it, it happens through thought. So, so what, what happens is, it all it is always based on some past experience and creating the new context. But basically, your memory is creates uh, the certain slots, uh, and when you are sleeping or when in your subconscious mind, uh, the networks are are become loose and it, it may create the new connection, right? And so, it 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 is always something. You may not have done that, but you may have heard that, or you may read about that, or you may have thought about that in the past, something. And, and those things, I mean, create some sort of correction, and which really gives give you the answer. So right. if you have yeah. never thought or never experienced, and it just comes suddenly from nowhere, that really does not happen. Exactly. I agree with that, Chitam. Completely agree. And also, Ravi, you know, these things, um, so when, uh, let's say, you know, the example that you gave, right, let's say, you know, you... <laughs> Found, find out a solution to a problem that has been pending for a long time. But the reality is, you, you know, um, if any scientist or any inventor has done that, that person may have spent so many hours in the past on that subject, right? Thousands and thousands of hours. Uh, you know, it does not happen that, you know, just randomly you arrive at a thought or you arrive at a solution like a miracle. It almost never happens which is why there are no accidents, you know. If you want to achieve something, you have to put in no effort. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, for example, uh, theory, of, uh, uh, theory of special relativity or general relativity does not occur to me, for example, right? Out of the blue, I have no mathematical background, I have no physics background, and uh, suddenly out of the blue, I, uh, I don't blurt out, you know, here's a theory and here's a proof. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm not disputing that at all. All I'm saying is that mind is a little more mysterious than, than what we know about it. And uh, the way it makes those connections, nobody can say 
that this is how it happened or this is the you have to put in this many of uh, hours of effort and only then it will happen or you have to think in this particular way and that's when it happens right it's not that way it is it, it you need you need a certain foundation you need certain amount of knowledge before you uh, you can arrive at such insights which may or may not always be uh, explainable in purely scientific terms or purely logical terms so i think uh, this is my personal belief i think that uh, being spiritual or at least uh, meditation things like uh, tools like meditation can help you in um, in um, uh, in arriving at such insights more often than not and i'm clearly i don't think anybody can dispute that the uh, ability to focus right some people can focus better than others and uh, use i i'm trying to use meditation as a tool to be able to focus better um, uh, at least one right, of the, one Ravi, of the Ravi, these are two different things i mean meditation and spirituality are are two 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 different thing meditation is a is a is a technique i right? agree I mean, uh, so so you you don't you you don't become spiritual because you do meditation you do meditation because you are spiritual and you think that the answers you are looking for will come through meditation so if you are spiritual you do meditation uh, and and you do meditation for other reasons also i i it it looks like your reason to do meditation is something else you call it spirituality but it's not hmm. maybe you have a point there i uh, i may be confusing cause and effect right what comes first or does meditation come first or spirituality comes first yeah That's so why... so if 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 you are spiritual according to my definition that you are you, you have a desire to know then there are a different path or different tactics i mean you go through some people the religion appeals to them so ritual so they go towards that which does not appeal to me right uh, uh the knowledge and seeking that appeals to me so i go more towards reading and listening and understanding and some philosophical aspects and what the socrates has to say and what plato was saying what aristotle says that because everybody in the world i mean went through this process right so you turn towards those things some people think that okay uh, the meditation will be the answer so people turn towards that some people believe that charity or doing something those those things uh, uh, will really give them answer so i i think uh, it is the other way around than i mean what what you are suggesting hmm. I, i i think it's uh, eventually it becomes a chicken and egg problem <laughs> if i may draw a very rough analogy no but i agree with you that uh, uh, it, it 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 can be looked at it that way that uh, spiritual being is spiritual is uh, uh, nature of the self basically some people are uh, uh, you see if you, but if you uh, accept such a broad definition then you have to agree that everybody is spiritual even sri harsha is even everybody everybody believes that they are spiritual right I mean, so no, according to this definition yeah sri sri harsha doesn't correct they are going to the definition of spirituality is different right right so the, it depends on the definition of spirituality i guess hmm. okay no But, i uh, i think uh, yeah according to the general understanding of spirituality you no know, i would call myself not spiritual so see, that's the reason why we, i yeah yeah i i agree with you sri harsha so that, that's the reason why i said we should yeah so so the term itself is confusing first of all i mean because it it spirituality itself name itself include spirit right and if you don't believe in spirit <laughs> you, yeah. there is no point in being spiritual yeah. so so uh, i i think the term itself is is uh, we need to define it that's what i said that then i mean discussion makes sense what is spiritual uh, and what what is not hmm. okay so i i don't know at the beginning of this discussion i did give my uh maybe i gave you a reason why i want to be spiritual you're right it's not um it's uh, i don't know i i i i just see that it's being spiritual uh it it uh, it includes both what you said that is uh, um understanding the true na- true nature of the universe of self or being or reason for our existence or 
or how we are connected, why we are connected to each other and, and the universe. Uh, how we are connected to the nature, how we are connected with each other, and uh, how we are connected. All these the people have different quests, and some people don't, and uh, that, that's, uh, that's fair enough. Um, so uh, that, that, that pondering over those questions and trying to arrive at some kind of answers is what makes one spiritual. That's what I believe. I, I don't know. If, uh, if there is somebody who just never thinks about these questions, never ponders over uh, something beyond the five senses, something um, that I, I don't know whether even such a person exists, but uh, that if, if such a person exists, then you can call them non-spiritual by a very broad definition that we are trying to imply, even if we are not able to put it in words, by a very broad definition will make everyone uh, spiritual, whether we like it or not. My, that's what I can say about spirituality. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. So, Sri Harsha, do you would you agree to be? <laughs> let me ask you this way: Would you agree to be spiritual if we remove the mystical or religious aspects out of it? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so this, uh, so religion has nothing to do with that, I and mean, in 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 uh, in some sense, I believe that the people who don't believe in religion have a better chance of understanding that because there is it removes a lot of baggage uh, which which comes with the misunderstanding. Yeah, and obviously people have tried to find answers, and uh, religion religions uh, might have been um, one of the most convincing to the people, right? Right. I mean, religion was invented to explain the universe around us, right? So, it's uh, different people did it in different ways. So, a part of... So, uh, so, so Ravi, I mean, I, I just uh, want to add a little bit. The religion also, I believe it's one of the tools only, right? So the, by be, by doing going to temple or, or really... Uh, worshipping or taking name of God, it, it, it does not uh, give you the knowledge of what you are looking for uh, for a spiritual person. So that is also one of the tools. For some people, it may appeal. Some people, it may not appeal. And so it has, it's independent of being spiritual, is independent of being religious. You know, just one uh, thought occurred to me. Um, we call somebody knowledgeable or uh, wise, for example. Now, that's a label, right? It's a label. And to get that label, you need to put in it. That's how you get that label. So is, is spirituality like that? Is, is some spiritual, is, is spirituality a label that you apply to people um, because they have certain characteristics or they exhibit certain characteristics? No, so who, uh, so how we recognize if someone is uh, religious uh, or, or, or spiritual or not? That's what you are saying? Right. So uh, as we apply labels like wise or knowledgeable, intelligent. Intelligent is probably a little bit different, but uh, wise or knowledgeable. Yeah, right. When we apply that, uh, that label, is it a label like one of those things? Is spirituality a label like that? I'm not sure. Maybe. So, so all, yeah. So all the labels I mean you mentioned are also relative, right? When you say someone is knowledgeable, the person would be knowledgeable with a reference to something. Right. Uh, correct. The correct. person may not be knowledgeable in in other things. Yeah. Totally agreed. I don't know. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. I think we have uh, struggled enough with the definition itself. Maybe we should just move on to a slightly different topic, unless uh, you have more to say about it. So uh, at least we are in agreement. I don't know about you, Sri Harsha, but uh, Chetan and I probably we are in agreement that uh, meditation is a tool, a uh, tool of spiritual people. The people who call themselves spiritual, yes. And religion is also a tool. Right. 
religion is a tool uh, many uh, religion or rather religious um, ritual right they are that's the tool rituals are the tool right but religion itself is a ritual what, what else is there um it's it's a belief it's uh, for some people it's a way of life rituals are uh, i'm i'm when i say ritual i'm talking religion about religion is not a way of life so way of life in a, a muslim living in indonesia and saudi arabia is completely different but they have a common religion it's a set of beliefs and set of rituals how you pray whom you pray what what is considered good uh, and what is considered bad uh, from uh, according to that system no but you cannot separate the cultural aspects of religion you cannot uh, Uh, separate it it be, uh, part of being religious or part of being belonging to religion like a club is uh, not just uh, the rituals but also uh, being uh, part of that culture right culture is, part of the culture has evolved from religion A- anyway i think uh, we're digressing here the reason i brought that topic up is uh, well, basically i, I don't I, agree with that by the way but yeah that's, a... that's okay um i i wanted to explore meditation a little bit if uh, if that's okay uh, that that's what i had planned for this uh, podcast so i want to explore meditation and my pers- uh, so um I, i i don't want to completely leave you out of it uh, shri harsha because you said you are not really, uh, spiritual and you don't uh, believe in those things so i don't know whether you have ever meditated but let me start by uh, my personal experience so uh when i was a child i'm talking about uh, 10 or 12 years um, maybe a little bit younger around that that age um i heard about meditation and i i had no clue why or what or how but i just uh, tried it a few times and i found it to be an interesting uh, experience and i had no guidance or uh, knowledge about how to do it but i i just uh, tried it a few times and then much later this happened uh, i did not realize at the moment, at that time but i used to travel many um, once every few months or so between hubli and uh, my hometown and uh, bangalore and or hubli and pune and uh, in in buses and uh, one problem i have is i'm not i can't sleep when i'm traveling by bus right some i don't know some problem and as a result what i what used to happen is that um, i would uh, i would try to focus on something so that i somehow get to sleep and i used to struggle with that and i used to reach this semi asleep state and uh, it used to be uh, interesting i just remembered that that happened and much later i in bangalore there is a organization called rsvk rishi sanskriti vidya kendra and they are basically they teach a meditation method called ssy siddha samadhi yoga so it's focused largely on meditation and little bit on uh, um uh pranayama and breathing techniques and then tiny little bit on uh, yoga asana and all that so they taught those things and i attended that uh, their sessions and their uh, workshops etc and when i was in uh, one of their workshops i experienced this state of mind and that i i could remember back from my uh, bus traveling days that it it mirrored that particular experience and um, and that that was uh, interesting in itself and i i also found that when i'm meditating as a part of a group i find it easier to focus it easier to uh, reduce the thoughts uh, you know stop thoughts from arriving and uh, feel that uh, i'm 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 one with the universe or whatever um and 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 that um uh, that that was about 20 years ago rsvk experience i after that i did not consistently meditate i did not continue that practice uh, unfortunately so it did not get anywhere much i fits and starts i have done it uh, maybe for a few days at a time uh, late uh, off late i read a book called waking up written by sam harris and he also has an app on android and iphone it's uh, called waking up course it's a it's an extremely good one i highly recommend it and i have been last 
couple of months i have been more or less consistent almost every day i am able to meditate and uh, i believe i have made some progress in that respect that's my personal experience with meditation chetan uh, i don't have any problem with meditation right i mean i i, I have gone through several different things in that area and as i as i mentioned i mean it, it it's it's a great tool uh, to do many many things i mean good things i mean it can, it can do for your health for your mind uh right yeah, yeah. so i i know that um, yeah there are many different uh, um ways of doing it there is a mindfulness meditation and then the uh uh art of living they teach something called sudarshan kriya siddha samadhi yoga they call it in rsvk and uh, yeah, the uh, vipassana uh, vipassana and med- sorry yeah vipassana is also uh, one of uh, those right and, and this uh, right. the the prajapita uh, brahma kumari they have their own way of doing sahaj yoga is one of the very uh, common and popular raj yoga what they call uh which like a lot of buddhism and jainism i mean they they do that that, that type of uh, meditation right right so vipassana in particular i have uh, because uh, sam harris has described in much detail and uh, i know that they conduct these uh, vipassana courses uh, all over the world and there are many places in us as well and they have this 10 day a uh, meditation course and uh, not course but uh, you go and meditate there for 10 days and that's something that i intend to do um, i i find it personally find it very difficult to meditate my to bring it bring my mind under control and uh, to stop thinking it, it's extremely difficult for me last couple of months i have seen some progress i am able to sit for 30 minutes 45 minutes i can't imagine 10 hours <laughs> <laughs> or eight hours that just uh, beyond my ability right now but uh, it would be an interesting uh, thing to do sri harsh do you have any experience at all medita- meditating i do not do not have uh, any personal experience with meditation i do recognize meditation as a great technique i do recognize it has uh, you know lot of benefits but uh, i have always been curious you know and there is something i definitely want to try um i am pretty sure that you know uh, you can feel something supernatural because obviously a lot of people have experienced that right um so i do want to explore in that area that's uh, that's the reason i believe we are having this conversation that um uh, it's meditation as a tool uh spirituality again we did not agree on uh, one clear definition but uh, if uh, there are many things in our life uh, my personal uh, problem as i said you know focus being able to focus on tasks being fo- able to continuously focus on something that has always been a very big challenge for me and uh, beyond that focus is one thing there are other things for example this, this all this i uh, much better explained by sam harris anyone who is interested i highly recommend his book it's called waking up and um, uh, at the end of this podcast i'm going to list all these uh, in a in a notes podcast notes and i'll provide references so one of he explains it really well that a lot of things in our lives we uh, our very being uh, how we relate to others how we handle tough situations uh, all this clearly depends on our mind and meditation is a tool for understanding and controlling that uh, mind of ours and uh, how we relate to others how we handle situations where you are involved in conflict with some other person your personal relationships your family relations your work uh, environment how you handle it how you interact with people a lot of these things if uh, can improve if we uh, if we bet, uh, develop better control over our minds also um, how we think about ourselves how we think about our place in the world how we think about our state our, what is it uh, for example we 
constantly compare, we constantly judge others. I'm, I'm not trying to generalize it to everyone. I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience. That uh, all these things happen and uh, these lead to dissatisfaction or what uh, Sam Harris calls unsatisfactoriness. He, trans- he got that word from Dukkha, that Buddha said Dukkha. Dukkha usually is uh, translated as unhappiness or, uh, or misery. He says that's not the correct definition and it's unsatisfactoriness about our experience. And this is something that uh, uh, meditation, I believe, uh, will help us uh, to get to a better state. No, not that. Not yeah, that. so uh, you're right that uh, sorry, Chetan. Uh, you're right that you know our attitude is what matters ultimately. Um, you know, it's you know we actually interact the world through the medium of our mind. So you know everything, our thought process, whatever goes inside, whatever whatever goes outside, whatever comes inside, it has to pass through this medium. So you know if you control this medium, you know the whole perspective changes. There is uh, no question about that. Chetan, you were saying something. No, again, I mean, we are, we are talking about meditation. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I mean, this is not, it, it's not a spirituality uh, discussion, right? So, I mean, again, I mean, meditation is, a, I, in my mind, this, I, I may really hurt, I mean, some people listening to this here, yeah, but uh, that Vipassana meditation or the meditation what uh, the Sadhguru does, I, I don't consider it as a spiritual thing I mean, it, it is it is a good tactic it, it can help in many things the, the whatever you were saying before focus your mind and being a better person and feeling better with your family and uh, get enough rest in few hours of sleep and this and that so so these are all uh, benefits I mean you can get from meditation it has nothing much to do uh, with uh, with uh, spirituality no, but uh, if you agree that meditation is a tool towards a uh, tool of the spiritual, then we are still discussing uh, spirituality, in my opinion. Uh, so, so you cannot lump, I mean, all meditation uh, in one bucket, right? So these meditations, what we are talking about, that they are specifically geared towards improving your efficiency. It's it's not a uh, it's it's not a spiritual uh, uh, thing. Uh, you mean to say that if I am engaged in uh, vipassana uh, meditation, then um, I am not being spiritual? I'm I'm not saying that. It is not. Well, I mean, everybody calls that whatever they do is spiritual. In my definition, uh, I'm saying that uh, that may be a side effect. That is not the main. Uh, main reason and you are not doing the your your main reason to do meditation is not really spiritual reason again i mean your goal is also efficiency so so in other words if i meditate if i'm able to effectively meditate for i don't know eight hours ten hours whatever uh, recommended period for achieving certain amount of wisdom uh, if if i'm able to do that uh, I won't, that will still, it will never result in in a state where I say, okay, now I understand. Uh, I suppose there is there are degrees of uh, uh, understanding, but I understand the universe better or my relationship with people better or uh, my, the reason for my existence or what is it I, what is my goal in life better. That's, uh, aren't they all somehow connected to spirituality? I, I believe they are. Okay, I mean, I, I, if you believe that, <laughs> that's fine. I mean, but it's uh, so. So again, I mean, it's a tool. Each tool has a purpose, right? What it is designed for. It doesn't mean that you 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 can have a plier and you can use that as a hammer also. But it, it doesn't mean that. I mean, it is designed for that. There is uh, there is a dichotomy in what you're saying, Chetan. You you're not uh, willing to say that spirituality is a label that you apply to all human beings no matter what they believe or what they think or how they are you 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 have to say that if if you say that then your definition becomes correct you are what you're talking about meditation becomes correct if you don't say that if you say that there are some people who are less spiritual or there are some people who are more spiritual 
if you if you say that and i believe that to be the case then there's a, there, these are tools that we use so meditation is one such tool to become more spiritual whether you look at it in a rational way and say that uh, you um, uh, in the sense that um, if you con- continuously thinking about it you become more spiritual that may not be the case but uh, it's a tool that you use for uh, becoming more spiritual do you disagree with that yes you so that meditation doesn't words, make you spiritual you do meditation because you are spiritual or you are not spiritual so a non spiritual person won't do meditation or cannot do meditation the non spiritual uh, person i mean again i mean it's it's all definition of what is spiritual right see that's uh, a, maybe doing I, the spirituality I, for different reason that's okay uh, maybe doing the meditation for different reason no no that that's a different uh, subject uh, all i'm saying is either you are applying uh, a very broad uh, definition of uh, spirituality and saying everybody is spiritual period right no matter what they think or believe or do they are spiritual that i as a matter of fact i agree with that but if that's not your definition then there are the degrees of being spiritual less or more and uh, okay now how does how do i become more spiritual or i, I i'm i am more spiritual by birth or by definition or what is it but why you want to become more spiritual <laughs> that is my point you cannot become spiritual why? you cannot have that goal right i mean your goal cannot be to be hungry your goal if you are hungry your goal is to eat so if you are spiritual then i mean you you do something if you are not why you want to be spiritual what is the point of becoming uh, spiritual as i said you know uh, why why you be, want to become spiritual it's a very really interesting interesting perspective for me you know what you are <laughs> bringing <laughs> <laughs> no no this is good this is good i yeah, it's very good actually it's very good yeah uh, because i never thought of it, thought of it thought of it that way either but um, there is there is no reason want... to become uh, uh, spiritual if you are not i i think uh, if it's a kind of a natural urge when you are hungry you want to eat when you are sleepy you want to sleep when you are tired you want to sleep the same way uh if if you become curious from inside uh, that you have to know this thing then you are spiritual you, you cannot have a goal to become spiritual uh, how about this um if so then in other words it's just a yeah either or uh, point either you are spiritual or you are not one one no. other thing ravi i mean you put meditation in a very big bucket in your mm-hmm. mind probably all meditation are same and all meditation there are hundreds types of meditation and what meditations I, you mention are are geared towards something else that, that's what i'm saying so when you say they, right they don't do meditation they do uh, that that's a just saying that is a is, is not possible what what buddha did in the meditation is different meditation than what sadguru does agreed i i am not disputing that at all i i am di- see i am looking at meditation as a tool and uh, in the context of spirituality maybe you're right i mean there are uh, you do it for different purposes and being um, so you are saying that is the spiritual people who seek knowledge and where one of the tools uh, to attain that knowledge is through meditation is that is that how you are Correct. putting it okay okay I, i don't know <laughs> it doesn't mean that only spiritual people do meditation like a lot of people do meditation uh, you you can be doing meditation for other things also but then but, uh, by very definition you have to be spiritual to seek knowledge no or be curious you said that right Uh, if uh, if you are spiritual then you become curious yeah about this particular thing about uh, uh, what we call self knowledge but you also said meditation is a tool that can be used for other than self knowledge 
yes but all these things are other than self knowledge that which makes you more efficient and which reduces your blood pressure uh, and right. keeps the heart rate normal makes you better person or uh, allows you to focus you sleep better all those things are other advantages they're not but they are not nothing to do with spirituality yeah it's not uh, yeah nothing to do is is very is a loaded term right everything has to do something with everything else okay can it all okay. add up you know um, maybe it's a part of self knowledge you know just a tiny bit part yeah it's like a, if you are really go and play uh, if you go and run in marathon or you go in olympics you can do many things which can really help towards that goal right there there will be many things the workout and sleeping regularly and eating these and getting enough fluid and these and that so there are many things and it it adds up right okay good yeah. well, okay one thing uh, that has done is uh, uh, this discussion has done is that uh, i clearly need to know uh, what um, what spirituality means that's uh, it's 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 really good that you pointed it out uh, chetan there are different ways of thinking about it um i i appreciate that now uh now coming to uh, again this discussion is more about uh, um i i guess it's difficult to talk about such abstract concepts uh, like spirituality so that's why a lot of focus is on meditation at least in my mind here and uh, what i wanted to talk next is about importance of um, uh, gurus right and guidance when it comes to meditation um is it necessary is is it absolutely necessary i personally i have felt that uh, guided meditations are more effective and are, are easier i instead of calling it more effective there are people i know who have described their um, as, as you said chetan that it's very easy for them to meditate it's uh, i know one person at least one person described it to me he said i just sit for meditation and uh, i i just uh, in in matter of no time at all 30 minutes have elapsed one hour has elapsed that sometimes people have to come and wake me up from not sleeping state but from a meditative state and uh, for me it's <laughs> every second i count every second when i'm sitting for meditation and that that is my state of mind i cannot simply focus maybe i am adhd or whatever so uh, will seeking a guru help me will taking a guru help me so or guided meditation using one of those apps where they actually guide you through uh, the steps i have in fact uh, uh, on for the record i have been using such apps and one of them is this uh, sam harris app called waking up course and it's really really good i really like it and it uh, i believe i have made progress in last couple of months what's your thought about guru having a guru or not having a guru so i mean like any other field i mean having somebody guiding you <laughs> always helps right i mean it, it, it's always i mean if you have someone who is showing you uh the best known methods to do anything uh, it, it, it's always better now i am not a uh very knowledgeable on the uh meditation right i mean this is uh, you are talking more about meditation probably i mean uh, the session should be on meditation uh, that uh, how to do what to do why to do uh, kind of thing uh, rather than uh, we spend a lot of time in talking about spirituality there so i'm i'm not deep into meditation and uh, really Know, how to really make a progress in that and i i agree with everything what you said it uh, it comes easily uh, to some people for some people it may take longer time it it's a basically uh, some people can hold a note when they seem very steady and without any, any training and some people uh, uh, cannot right so it, it's that kind of thing and you practice and you improve on that right and somebody guiding will definitely uh, help when there is a any situation 
where you are dealing with a dynamic object or a dynamic being like human being uh you cannot apply rules uh, one person to other person very easily at that time having someone uh, guiding always helps because they will tune uh, whatever their recommendation and direction accordingly as uh, the person who is receiving it. right right uh, again personal experience i found it uh, effective and profound when i am sitting with a lot of other people and meditating at the same time and the individual meditation i, I find it much harder okay and uh, one other topic Maybe, uh, i have a question you know what is your uh, experience about going to those you know the workshops actual workshops and following the app do you find uh, you know one more beneficial than the other um you know i don't have a lot of experience with app other than uh, waking up course that i mentioned earlier um it's a uh, waking up course is good i think it 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 uh, even in my personal case or generally speaking it is a sustained effort that matters so even if you go to a, a workshop for example the effect may be good when you are there or when, uh, but it it will wear off after a while same thing with uh, i guess it uh, this is applicable to everything whatever you practice more right you become better at it so uh, sam harris talks about his gurus when he goes to uh, india and uh, nepal where he meets many of these tibetan and buddhist uh, monks and he learns from them and he talks about uh, punja Uh, some h w punja or somebody in uh, lucknow i don't know if you have heard of him uh, ketan so he was a great guru uh, in the recent past and uh, so obviously he uh, sam harris has spent literally spent two years of uh, out of 10 or 12 years meditating two continuous years if you just count the number of hours he has spent so that that what he claims and that kind of uh, practice is ultimately uh, probably what is required to achieve any kind of uh, uh, any kind of depth in it but i suppose we are not seeking at least i am personally i am not seeking that but i am not willing because i am not willing to invest that kind of time in it but um, my personal experience siddha samadhi yoga was good and um, there they taught us various techniques of uh, mind uh, thought cessation how do you how do you prevent thoughts from uh, not prevent but how to manage thoughts that they arise and they go away and uh, sam harris also talks about it it's uh, um, workshops are good because personally as i said i do better when i'm sitting with a lot of other people but uh, everybody is different so uh, there is one other controversial topic i just wanted to bring up and uh, i have little bit of uh, personal experience and this is about psychedelic, psychedelic drugs it's it's a controversial and everybody may not feel comfortable talking about their personal experience and i'll you know i'll respect that but let i i just uh, wanted to bring it up um when i was in high school in india um i was um, how to put it uh, part of uh, friends who were less than uh, goody goody or uh you know straight laced or academic or whatever you want to call them so one of the things that happened during that time is they used to eat this uh, pan right and the pan uh had some some drug in it and i have no idea what to, to date i don't know what what that was they call, used to call it mama so i ate that for a little while maybe a few weeks just to see how it feels and it was an interesting experience um it's like when you have alcohol right when you reach a state of high uh, that's what it was and that's that the extent of my personal experience with psychedelic drugs but there is uh, e- even in indian tradition um people talk about uh, consuming hashish or bhang or various uh, drugs and they uh, the sadhus or uh, uh, people who 
who are into spirituality full time as full time spirituality etc they they experience these things uh, they they consume these things and um, sam harris also talks about it a lot he has uh, experimented with those things and he found it to be useful not necessarily the best way to achieve spirituality but or at least meditative state and uh, but they say that it uh, some of these uh, these drugs have that kind of effect on mind so there is some connection between uh, meditation and uh, uh, achieving certain effects in your mind uh, in your mind and uh, the, some of these drugs uh, achieve that kind of uh, goal any any thoughts any experiences that you would like to share sure i don't have experience with bhang um, no it's the bhang is fairly common in even in india actually um you know you can get the, if you go to kashi you'll get something called kashi halwa people often bring it back you know it has bang in it uh, it's a very different experience and i also have experience with uh, marijuana i um, you know i i'm, I'm okay to admit that you know it's become illegal almost everywhere so it's I, i do like it you know i do like that experience it's a very different experience um and it's very interesting to know that you know it's somewhere close to the meditation experience that we are talking about um i am not speaking from personal experience at least in that regard i i have never been able to achieve that kind of uh, meditative experience which parallels uh, my experience with pan so uh, I'm, i'm i'm just telling you what i have read and heard okay i i i don't have any experience or not much uh, opinion on that um, i i believe all these things what you call meditation like experience is 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 basically is i said that all your experiences are coded in slots memory slots and uh, when you see or experience uh, something it tries to find the appropriate shape and fits in there uh, right away and with all Uh, these drugs and everything it loosens uh, those boundaries so you have a kind of a short circuit in the brain which gives you different experience which you have never seen or experienced before but it, it it's really everything coming still from your brain whatever is lying there it's like a kaleidoscope i mean if you move and it creates some new images the same way your experiences and memory connect differently and and and, and present something completely different and that is one of the reason why a lot of creative people they say they taking drugs and help them because it loosens all these boundaries and create some new formation which is creative process so right. I, right. Uh, i i i don't believe it has anything to do with with uh, spirituality or uh, it it's a it's not probably a similar uh, experience what you, you you get through meditation so meditation is your active state where you are really getting control over your thoughts or which direction and you are taking those thoughts and these drugs are basically doing that uh, on its own but the you are not really directing your thoughts in some direction uh, right from my personal experience right let me uh, say one thing right with the uh, experience with bang if you have uh, you know if you have consumed alcohol you will know but it's very different it's not like alcohol at all bang it will not it will keep you awake bang will keep you awake it will keep you very focused let me tell you that and you can continue to do whatever you are doing even in that state um it's like it's, it's very hard to explain that uh, you know experience you really have to experience it it's like you are in two worlds your mind is in two worlds one is the real world where you are operating your day to day activities right and the second world is totally different it is you know uh, there is like you know there is a movie going on and you are actually watching that movie you are having a totally different experience in that second world but that does not interrupt with what you are doing in this first world you know the real world where you are interacting with other people working you know doing other things this is a very different experience let me tell you that that's very interesting um so uh, in the waking up book sam harris talks about uh, split brain um right. if uh, that's exactly so, what it is so so uh, ravi we are 3 minutes uh, from the timeline i mean we said so 
I don't yeah, know. if you don't mind, uh, I'll, I'll just take a couple of minutes to talk about one thing and then we'll come to a conclusion. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So Sam Harris talks about uh, split brain, that is right brain and left brain. It is connected by, um, I think it's called uh, uh, corpus callosum, right? There are a huge number of fibers that connect the two sides of the brain. That's how you have one feeling of being one or self, right? That, that's where it comes from. But in reality, we actually have two brains. And um, uh, if uh, in, in, peop uh, among, uh, in people who have, in whom the corpus callosum is disconnected, uh, severed for some reason, they clearly display this being two people or two uh, brains. For example, one experiment, apparently one experiment they did, is that uh, they, um, um, what one side uh, did, the other side had a different explanation for why why they did it. For example, they showed uh, something to the person, and the left brain, as a result of seeing that, the left brain did something. But when they asked to come up with uh, an explanation why you did it, um, they they said, I felt like doing it. They could not connect the two. That is, there was a stimulus that uh, led, for example, raise your hand, right? For example, somebody showed a plaque or a, a board which said, raise your hand, and they raised their hand. And uh, But when asked to think about it, they came up with a different explanation. They did not say that because you said raised my hand, I raised it. They just said, I, I felt like doing it. So they could, the brains could not connect the two. So clearly there is some, um, this is something that uh, split brain uh, uh, one other thing, just final thing I wanted to talk about is LSD. I have read the description of people who have consumed LSD and they said that it leads to a state called complete destruction of self. That you arrive, uh, it, it, uh, it feels like you have completely lost the sense of being a self or being one person, right? It's, uh, it's a very interesting state. and. Um, <clears throat> Um, Sam Harris describes about uh, meditative state, reaching such a meditative state is what our goal is. That's when you become one with the universe. You become, uh, you then that concept of me versus others uh, and um, me being a separate part of uh, the, or rather being separate from the world, that goes away. When that goes away, then uh, your whole idea of uh, jud judgment judgmental behavior or selfishness or uh, acquiring things for yourself. All these things become, become immaterial or secondary to your existence. So I don't know whether it's, it's possible for some people or not, but uh, that I, I, I really would like to reach there through meditation. I, I don't intend to experiment the drugs. It may not be safe. It may not be, first of all, it's not legal. It's not safe. There are many other things. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I would like to do. Anything, any final thoughts or you want to add more to it, please feel free to do so. But if you're out of time, we can. Uh... Uh, no, not really. I don't have any other input. Yes, no, I don't have any thoughts. Thanks for hosting this. Baby. Yeah, it's, it's been a very interesting discussion. Um, I, I started this as a means of learning more about the world and about the things that I find interesting. Uh, what I found, from, especially from today's experience, is that uh, other perspectives, sometimes they can be drastically, radically different from my own. And uh, it's, it's totally, I, I totally welcome that. It's, uh, I could be wrong, totally wrong about something. And uh, I don't know if I'm totally wrong about spirituality, but uh, clearly there are other perspectives, other ways of thinking about it. And that uh, this discussion has brought it up. Uh, so far, uh, in all the podcasts I have done, I have invited people like myself, my friends, whom I know. Um, uh, I, I don't think any of those people have been experts in any specific field. But I think um, a layman's perspective is important. And many times, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that other people, other lay people, uh, relate to it in a different way than an expert discussion. There are many good podcasters in the world, 
and uh, they are experts in their fields or they are really good at uh, podcasting. I'm, I, I don't believe I am one of them yet. <laughs> so, um, but I think I, I'm hoping that people will relate to this kind of discussions um, uh, and and uh, and listen to it and maybe give us some feedback. So I hope you find it. You have found today's discussion to be interesting. And uh, thanks again for joining.